Hey friends, I am Supreme Thapa from Supreme's Coaching and today I am here with a new video on the topic Michelson Method. Hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon so that you are the first to know when I upload anything new. So let's get started. Among various methods, Michelson Method is the most precise and well known method for measuring the speed of light. As you can see, I have drawn an experimental arrangement of the Michelson method. The experimental arrangement consists of the intense source as from which the light uh, is allowed to fall on the one face of the octagonal mirror so that the reflection phenomena takes place and the further the process can be carried out. It consists of the three mirrors, one octagonal mirror, next one is concave mirror and the plane mirror. I named them as M1, M2 and M3. Michelson connected this octagonal mirror with an electric motor so that the rotation can be produced across an axis or that can pass through the center of this octagonal mirror. After the phenomena of reflection, when the light was incident on the one face of octagonal mirror uh, by making the angle of 45 after passing through the slit, the reflected light was sent to the another mirror, concave mirror, which is at the distance of D. In the original experiment of Michelson uh, experiment, the, he carried his experiment between the two mountains. So the distance between these two mirrors was measured in kilometer, about 35 kilometers. He also kept another mirror called plane mirror in the focal plane of the concave mirror so that the multiple reflection uh, can take place and the light can finally return into the octagonal mirror and incident on the another face of the octagonal mirror by making an angle of 45 so that the image of the source can be th seen through the telescope. This is all about the uh, experimental arrangement of the Michelson method. Now let us discuss about his experiment, how he performed his experiment and calculated the value of speed of light. Michelson performed his experiment in two ways. One, by keeping this octagonal mirror in the stationary position. And in next way, he performed his experiment by rotating this octagonal mirror with the help of electric motor. So let us discuss about the first case that by keeping the octagonal mirror in the stationary position. We know that whenever the light is incident on any reflecting surface, then the phenomena of reflection takes place and light gets reflected. It is same in our case. Whenever the light from any intense source S is incident on the one face of octagonal mirror M, in our case, let us say it is incident on the first face 1 by making the angle of 45 after passing through the slit, then the phenomena of reflection undergoes and the reflected light that was produced after the reflection was sent to the another mirror, uh, concave mirror, which is at the distance of D. I have already mentioned that the plane mirror is kept between the focal plane of this concave mirror so that the multiple reflection can take place and the light that was sent from this octagonal mirror can uh, finally return back into uh, the octagonal mirror only and is incident on the another face of the octagonal mirror, let us say third face of the octagonal mirror by making the angle of 45 degrees, 45 degree, and the image was seen through the telescope. When the image was seen through the telescope, he calculated the expression of time travel by the light. So, we know that Whenever the object covers a certain distance with the velocity v, then we can easily calculate the expression of the time. So, t we, in that view, we can write t equals to distance cover upon velocity. In our case, distance traveled by light is given as 2d and velocity is simply denoted as c. Therefore, the time expression can be written as 2d upon c. Now I know that you, there arises a question in your mind that why we neglect this distance? Because light has uh, traveled the distance from M1 to M2 and again from M2 to M3 and finally from uh, mirror, plane mirror M3 to M2. But we wrote only the distance traveled by light between these two mirrors, octagonal mirror and the concave mirror. It is because 
the distance between this two mirror plane mirror and the concave mirror is much more smaller in comparison to the distance between the concave mirror and the octagonal mirror so we will write the total distance as 2d only so it be let me name this equation as equation number one in next step michelson performed his experiment by rotating this octagonal mirror with the help of the electric motor at the first phase of rotation the image was not seen on the telescope it is because the incident the the light that was incident on the third phase from the concave mirror was not incident by making the angle of 45 so that the image was disappeared so so michelson increases the rotation speed of this octagonal mirror until the image was seen the image was seen on the telescope when after one complete rotation the adjacent side of the octagonal mirror was replaced by another for example if at the first phase before the rotation if the light was incident on the third phase from the concave mirror then after one rotation it should be replaced by the another side of the octagonal mirror that is by the side second side so that the image will reappear at the telescope when the when the image was uh, reappeared in the telescope then Mike michelson calculated the time traveled by this octagonal mirror to complete the one rotation the time that was calculated by by uh, michelson after the one rotation was found to be always equal to this time so we can write that time in in case in in expression of angular displacement because it has covered the angular displacement to replace its adjacent side uh, adjacent side so we can write t equals to sorry let me indicate as the capital T. Capital T equals to theta upon omega. Where theta is the angular displacement covered when it replaces its adjacent side and omega is the angular velocity. We can express this angular velocity in terms of frequency that T equals to theta upon 2 pi f. Now, the angular velocity in this case, in our case, can also be written as 2 pi upon 8. That is because in one complete rotation, the total angular displacement covered by this octagonal mirror will be 2 pi. Because it has completed one complete rotation, that is 2 pi. And it has got 8 faces. So the one, one angular displacement covered by the one face to replace its adjacent side is given, of, given as 2 pi upon 8. But generally we will write m because in place of octagonal mirror we can use another mirror, pentagon, uh, pentagonal mirror or any other mirror. So generally we will write 2 pi upon m. So in place of theta we can write t is equals to 2 pi upon m into 2 pi f. Now cancelling this 2 pi 2 pi we get t equals 1 upon m f let me name this equation as equation number second now these are the these are the time one time that is uh, time taken by the light to travel from the distance uh, from the mirror m1 to m2 and again from m2 to m1 and next time is given as or a distance traveled by this octagonal mirror to complete it one complete rotation so we can equate this uh, both the time so we can write therefore we can write 2d upon c equals 1 upon mf therefore c equals 2d mf this is the expression general expression of the michelson method where d is the distance between these two octagonal mirror and the concave mirror M is the number of the side of the mirror the used in the experiment. In our case, we have used octagonal mirror. So, in our case, the value of M will be 8 and F is the frequency of rotation. So, this was the expression derived by the Michelson. Now, in his original experiment, 
he carried a, this experiment between the two mountains so distance between that two mountains was d equals 35 kilometer and frequency he took about that rotating motor was that uh, 500 around 528 per second now putting this value in expression c equals to 2 d m f we get c equals to 2.99 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second which is nearly equals to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second that is the original speed of light or actual speed of light so this is nearly equals to the original value of speed of light so because of this reason it is known as most precise method for determining the speed of light experimentally